whole that's the whole thing, right? It doesn't have to be I'm voting Democrat for the rest of my life. No. You know, like people, it's okay to vote Democrat once. Nobody has to know. You can even tell people that you voted for Donald Trump. I yeah, really don't care. We won't snitch. We will not tell. <laughs> I promise. <laughs> So a lot's been going on, and uh, we haven't had a chance to kind of like talk about it. So um, I'm going to do something that I normally don't do, but I'm going to call Kamala Harris winning, and I believe she's going to flip North Carolina. Um, here's why. Here's my working theory. So for those people that don't know, I used to be a registered Republican, although I never voted a straight ticket. Um, I'm a very, very open, like I like business. I like making money, but I've always been kind of observant of social issues in some shape, form or another. Well, right around Mitt Romney, I started to notice um, some of the ilk in what the GOP was doing. And that's just not that's just a, a reference of time, but I was, I'm talking more about our state legislator here in uh, North Carolina. And that's when they, for the most part, started doing, start trying to call, call, uh, make it difficult for people to vote. And I've always been of the opinion of if somebody wants to take something away from me, there must be a reason for it. And I started paying attention more and more, uh, but I, you know, I did not vote for President Obama. Um, now that's public. And my reasoning being that's, was that's been public for a while. Yeah. OK. Oh, good. Because um, I almost feel guilty. But long story short, there's something that about politics that the Republican Party is missing. And what they're missing is they've spent the last 50 to 60 years. Uh, trying to separate the the country, and if you look throughout our recent history, segregation failed. The easier way to do it was through class warfare, and they've been pretty successful at that. One of the spearheading tactics has been um, uh, the educational system, and. I've always been a proponent of public schools because we pay taxes and why not make that, you know, I believe make that better as opposed to making it worse or comp, you know, complicated splitting tax funds across here and there. And it goes against the idea of having an efficient government. And that's one thing I do believe. I believe the government should be more efficient. It's objective is to help the citizens, not for self-serving. But I've seen the Republican Party in recent years get more bold. That's a little bit of the of the cont or the backstory or just the framework. That's not even the rant, ladies and gentlemen. I know, right? What happened when Trump got elected as a person that didn't vote for Trump or Hillary Clinton? She was the worst possible candidate in my eyes to run. I firmly believe that he got elected on a fluke. <laughs> like it was like a, an oopsie moment. Now, now, now pin that and I'm going to come back to it. The craziness of him being elected, it's, it, it accelerated a lot of the things about the GOP that are not um, good for society, just to be honest with you. And they always try to make the argument, well, let's talk about policy and we'll, we'll win. And if you start to do the math, you realize that's not true. Um, you, you went mute for a second. <laughs> You're crunching your, your... Yeah, sorry. When was the last time you heard a Republican talk about policy? I would say um, before Trump. Like it's it's no longer a thing because now it's just culture war. It's all it's all, but the culture war has been in it's been embedded in their platform for, since. Oh, for, for a lot longer than that, but for, now it's literally the only thing that's left of their platform. That's all they have left. They've abandoned um, all other policy positions, 
all together because they realize they don't actually need it, right? Policy positions can actually get you in trouble <laughs> with the yeah. base that you're riling up here. If you take a stance on any of these things, they might not like it, but... But that's, as as that's a new occurrence, right? It is. So my parents are the military. One of the reasons I, I leaned conservative in some things is because my parents are the military. And, you know, when Republicans are in office, my dad got a raise. Um, and obviously, national defense, our, our global standing, our global standing on the world stage, th those are important things that are in my DNA. Mm -hmm. Um. I do believe that our corporate tax rate. Now, this is where, like, I'm not going to get into the weeds here, but I started looking back on things I used to believe and started to realize that they were they they were upside down, they were lopsided, They're, the scales never balanced out. No. Uh, and the corporate tax rate is it'll be one thread I'll pull and I'll pull it very quickly. We force offshoring for a long time because of trickle-down economics. There was a, a clawback during the 90s, but we exported a lot of jobs and we, we offshored them and boom, and then we pulled, you know, we just kept importing. So right around mid-90s, we've just been off kilter for a long time. And then you have, you know, 9-11. So when you, talk, when you talk to Republicans about policies, they they're talking of a bygone era and policy talk didn't really come about into the, like the Reagan area era. Um, then you, the policies then, and, and just the global friction, whether it was uh, Iran Contra, whether it was what the CIA was doing in, in central and uh, South America. Whether, so there's a lot of things where policy was a stronger argument because those things were happening. Yeah. And then it stopped. So Trump, he pulled out an electorate, five to seven percent. I'm just going to say seven percent of people that would vote for Republicans that had already, for the most part, probably abandoned the party. Mm -hmm. um, I wish I had a chart of watching people becoming unaffiliated voters or independents over the last like two decades. And it's actually gone up. Yeah. And. What I find interesting is that the Republicans are the, the people that claim that as a their political party, they've switched to become an apologist for Trump. They're not really talking about they they make the the, the dual argument of well, let's talk about policy and you know, Trump did this. And it's like, wait a minute. If you understand anything about like how policies enacted. The reason why most presidents want to get two terms is because you never get stuff done in your first term. Right. A lot of the things that he takes credit for are carryovers from Obama, President Obama. Well, I mean, what about all the promises he made that he never fulfilled? That not, yeah. Infrastructure, uh, replacing it, the ACA. Re right. Repeal and replace like every two weeks, right? It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. He even takes credit for the, um, the Supreme Court picks and federal judge judge picks. That wasn't yeah. even him. That was the Heritage Foundation. Yeah. Predominantly. And Those Mitch, people were literally handed to him and he was told who to pick. Right. And Mitch McConnell. He had no idea who any of those people were. Oh, I mean, he's not smart enough to know who those people were. No. So. And he's too uh, narcissistic to care who those people are. Well, I, I think for him. So a lot of people say this is his third time running for office. And that's technically not true. He was he ran in 2000 and he lost in the primary. Yep. Uh, he he fiddled around and thought about running in 2004 and chickened out. So when you start looking at facts, the the. The sad part is because he won in 2016, the current GOP party is thinking that's how we win. We can only win with him. Yep. And they're sorely mistaken. Uh, it's it's actually really pathetic, to be honest with you. Um, yeah, I agree. <laughs> and it's it's really amazing to watch the uh, mental gymnastics that so many members of the GOP party 
or I guess it's just the GOP because it's the grand old party. Right. Um, that the members of the GOP do to, like you said, to apologize for Trump. I mean, the Nikki Haley stuff, you know, where she's I like, I want this campaign to win. But the campaign is not going to win talking about crowd sizes. It's not going to win talking about what race Kamala Harris is. It's not going to win talking about whether she's dumb. It's not. You can't win on those things. The American people are smart. Treat them like they're smart. Are you fucking stupid? Do you re do, do you remember what the last nine plus years have been like? I mean, this guy's entire life. This is what he does. He right. berates people. He's never going to get out there and talk about policy in any meaningful way, because if he did, his audience would fall asleep. Let's 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 pull the policy out of the, out of the that's uh, that's three card Monty, because I, I've watched several Republicans over the last few days try to bring it back to the it's about immigration. It's about the economy. It's about mm -hmm. uh, energy independence. But they're. They are being intellectually dishonest because yes. they, don't, they don't mention the fact that immigration is a bipartisan problem that's been a problem. And the Democrats have dropped the ball, too, when they control the House and yep. the Senate didn't fix it. Um, they didn't fix Roe. I mean, these are things that yep. they're they're out there. Yep. It, so it's it's these stump issues are not really issues that are going to be affected by our current like people in position. I don't, I don't want to say leadership because it's not a sign of leadership. Um, I had an interesting talk with somebody from Serbia and we were just talking about immigration, ironically. And uh, he echoed and was surprised that I knew about like the different makeup of immigrants in the Northeast. And I'm like, yeah, dude, in New York, Chicago, it's not Hispanics that are coming like there. It's like Eastern Europeans. He's like, yeah, Chicago's got the largest like amount of Serbian immigrants in the United States. Um, so we look at these things and I don't, I don't even think it's polarized. I think we're just ignorant to the facts that we spouse as being like, like facts. They're not even altogether true. I mean, they're, you're being honest about your facts, but they're not true, right? And we, we look at it, things in pockets, and the Republicans just spend so much time trying to move the goalpost, and they're not even honest enough to say, yeah, we can't talk about the economy because Donald Trump introduced trillions of dollars of debt with tax cuts that haven't right. really helped people. Um, we can't talk about the border because... He really he literally stood in the way of the most recent attempt to do anything about right. it. It's a bite. And in the four years that he was there, all he did was build a couple of miles of wall in mostly in areas where wall already existed. Doesn't solve the problem. No. And and I want to say this publicly also. So Chris and I have talked about this a few times. My one criticism of Joe Biden was he said he was gonna be a transitional president. And like, I was just like, that's it. Like, he should have, he had four years of plan, and this is where we are. But right now, I'm kind of like, maybe it's a good idea to give somebody 90 days. I, you know, it's funny <laughs> because I've had that thought, and I know it's not the case, but it's like, what a brilliant strategy <laughs> it would have been to have planned this all along and that, to be like, we are going to hit him with this fuck. We're going to go southpaw out of nowhere. Okay, now, Luann, Southpaw, Southpaw. <sighs> and he isn't going to know how to react. And that's exactly, he has no idea how to counter all of the momentum. The only thing he can do is throw a fit in hopes that it draws some attention back to him. But it's a, it's when he's doing it, he's doing it in such a way that it's not actually winning him any additional support. It's just getting him attention. Imagine a QB Neal. At your own like goal line because you flubbed the the fourth, yeah. Just imagine having to go through. That is exactly what is happening to the Republicans, and I think it's beautiful. Like it's just brilliant. It's like wow, I don't like it what went on before, but I kind of like it now. It's great. Um, 
it's it's the equivalent of a QB nail in your own end zone. And you're like, man, if we just would have done this. Anything different. The problem is, is um, as I've said before, the, the GOP, the Republicans, they have to implode. That party, yes. that party has been on the decline for well over 50, 60 years. And That's what- the thing that I think, just real quick, that really confuses me about people like uh, Nikki Haley, you know, and some of these, uh, Lindsey Graham, who know better when it comes to Trump, that they know exactly who he is and what mm-hmm. they're going to get, that they don't see the writing on the wall, that they've, this they've is known. not... but but. You know, like they're continuing to hitch their wagon to him and not think like maybe I could be part of the foundation of a new version of the Republican Party. You know, like why why attach yourself to that sinking ship instead of floating in your own life raft for a little while, maybe with a couple other people? I I mean, I I don't know, I guess I guess because they think that if they don't go along with him, then he's going to you know, primary them and then they won't be able to, because the Republican primary voters will pretty much do what Trump wants them to do. Well, but it's It's just that when it comes to the general election, he hasn't been able to sway enough people to actually get out and do anything. So he's not just a, uh, I, well, to, to the point you're making, I think that it's their fear. Like Nikki Haley is the worst example, to be honest with you. And uh, followed closely by Lindsey Graham, Mister. I think what he did was wrong, and I'm done. I've I've had it up to here. Whatever. Like you're there kissing the ring and like you know stroking him out. Mm-hmm. Nikki Haley spent months battling against this this framework of the current party. Yeah, and then she succumbed to. Well, I want to be here in four years. Yeah. That's like the weakest position ever. Exactly. Adam Kissinger is kind of like, nah, that's whack. <laughs> you got the uh, lieutenant governor from uh, the former lieutenant governor from Georgia. No, this is no, I'm voting for somebody to get him out of office. This, we'll come back and re- like Republicans 2.0. Right. The whole That's the whole thing, right? It doesn't have to be I'm voting Democrat for the rest of my life. No. You know, like. People, it's okay to vote Democrat once. Nobody has to know. You can even tell people that you voted for Donald Trump. I yeah, really don't care. We won't snitch. We will not tell. <laughs> I promise. Nobody's going to know. Nobody's going to know. They're going to know. How would they know? Thanks for checking out the Chris and Andre show. Remember, unlike yourself in middle school, those like and subscribe buttons aren't going to hit themselves. And be sure to leave a comment with your favorite part of the show or a topic you'd like us to cover in the future. As always, stay salty.